I moved to New York in 1990 with, I think, $35, because I didn't have the sense to be like, that's a terrible idea. I just wanted to be here. And then moved in with a friend who said I could, only to realize he was sleeping on someone's couch. And so when I showed up with my suitcase, I just remember someone coming out of the one bedroom and going, who the hell is she? And I was like, oh, I don't think this is my friend's apartment. And we had no money to get anything else. We were sharing, we would share a bagel because we couldn't each get one. Like I was down to like pennies and in change and all that stuff, which, but everybody I knew was doing that. It was part of the, you know, if you got five bucks, we'd probably save it for a drink and skip the food so we could feel like we were going out in Manhattan, but it's, you know, it's weird jobs. I shucked oysters. I think all of that part, I mean, at least for everybody I was friends with, nobody just came here and suddenly could get an apartment and live. I think part of the, I think the struggle is the best thing you can have because it kind of, you got to want it badly enough. And it, I think in the end, it kind of helps you build up who you are. Awesome. No, I think I'm too chicken to go back to stand up. Stop. Truly, and I'm not like I'm not shy or like oh I'm nervous to do things. I just think it's a thing that I could do at 20 because I didn't know what really went into it. I also think it's something that you don't stop. I think you've got to keep you've got to keep at it, and you have to. I mean, people that are as big of stand ups as you can get still do their nights out, still go and play small rooms. They just need to be in front of an audience to work the material so they stay in that groove. And now I just also, you know, I don't really operate through me as much, if that makes any sense. I like living the work I do that it's via another character. I, I think when it, if I had to just be myself, I'd, I wouldn't know what to say or do. Speaking of what to say or do, what would you tell your 20-year-old self now if you're doing a campus tour in an age where there's such massive backlash against the material? Nowadays, how does one approach, say, a campus comedy tour, and how would you if you were 20? What, what, what material is passable? I think if you're trying to shock, as opposed to that's really your opinion, it may not work out. I think you just have to really believe in what you're saying. I mean, I'm also a big believer in, like, don't cheap, take cheap shots at people. I think, you know, I've, I've always been a fan of people who, kind of make themselves the butt of the joke. I think Can it's, you, sorry. Yeah, I think anything. I think it's easier to show, if you're trying to shine the light on the flaws and how we're all idiots or whatever it is to make us relatable to each other. I mean, usually when you're doing stand-up, it's to get some kind of relatability of like, don't we all feel this way? Or do you think this is insane? Because I do. I mean, sometimes it was a sanity check of, even if the story was funny, it's like, it's still odd, right? I'm not alone. Like, you are looking for someone to get what you're saying. I think it's still about relating to people. So I just tell me to stay the course.